Hello, Milky fans. Milk still here with you for another Idol Heroes video. We are one week out before Christmas. I'm very, very excited for the next hero that comes out, simply because I can summon the new light or dark hero that comes out straight away next week. Uh, I might consider doing a live stream because I'm not working. We can test out that new hero straight away because I have all my replacement flora copies ready <laughs> and I have the replacement crystals as well. So we can test out that sucker straight away without needing to waste our time just doing the useless summoning crap, which I know none of you really enjoy anyway, <laughs> because it's like, I mean, you get heroes, yeah, it's kind of good to look for the luck, but you don't really care. Uh, on the personal note, I mean, I am starting my Christmas break, but I'll probably work a couple of days throughout Christmas because I can, uh, I'm a consultant, so I found out that a couple of my clients, the leadership team, they're going to be around during the break, uh, and this is the only time I can get them, so... I'm just going to do a couple of workshops on my Uber front because I know some of you are wanting me to start an Uber channel. I had my first interesting ride. I mean, I've had a lot of interesting rides, but this one is one that you sort of sit back and you think about what the fuck just happened. <laughs> so the I picked up this lady. Uh, usually, I have a very strict rule in Uber. During the day, I never pick up anyone below 4.7 stars. And at night, I never pick up anyone below uh, 4.8 stars. And this is like 9 p.m. and bon beyond because I bought a new car and I don't want people throwing up in it or doing bad things in it. And so the rule has generally served me well. I similarly sometimes also never pick up five-star individuals. I've, I've shied away from doing that now. Only because when you start Uber, you start with five stars. And if you're a complete bellend, uh, you can commit bad things with five stars. And so my experience with five stars... One gentleman in particular hasn't been great, and uh, I, I'm shy to pick up people on five stars now because simply because they haven't had the experience, right? They haven't proven themselves. It's very f f rare to find a unicorn, someone that has genuinely sits on five stars the whole time as a rider. It's probably easier as a driver, but as a rider, for some weird reason, very few people are genuine five stars. Like for people on 4.8s and 4.9s, you got to wonder why they ever got a four star. They deserve to be five stars. So. I have all these rules, but you probably don't care because none of you drive Uber. But the interesting story was this girl, she was 4.66 stars or 4.59 stars, I forget. But it was below my threshold. But she was, the app said it was going to be a long ride. And so it was during the day and I kind of got greedy and I took it. When I saw her, I almost immediately regretted taking her. She was kind of disheveled. She, she looked like she'd been up the whole night and she was smoking. And that's one of the things I hate about people in my car. It's like the fact that the smoke is... Anyway, pick her up. And <laughs> throughout the trip, she's swearing. And I thought, okay, I can put up with swearing. Uh, she doesn't smell. And she's not like kicking my seats or anything like that. So I'm okay with that. Anyway, the, just hearing her conversation with her friends about the fact that one of her friends just got bailed or she just got bailed and she, she was close to losing a son... One of her friends just came out of coma in a hospital because she had to be put in a coma, induced coma. And clearly she's had a very hard life. It's not for me to judge her as an Uber driver on her life, right? My my job is to drive her and I am rating her. So the conflict comes with giving her how many stars, right? So at the end of a ride, we're supposed to give her a number of stars, one to five. And usually I give, I've given everyone five stars except, except for one guy. And... The, the conflict is this. She is... I'm not supposed to assess her based on her character. Um, so her, her past is her past. As a writer, she was perfect, right? Except for the swing. So she didn't damage my car. She didn't make my car smelly. She said, thank you. Uh, what, was, what I was deeply conflicted about was the fact that I actually drove her to meet her drug dealer. <laughs> and they did the deal behind the fence, but it was plainly obvious she was going to buy drugs. Um, but then I asked myself, well, I didn't actually see it, so I'm not technically an accessory to procuring drugs. Uh, and by that same token, you know, it's like a smoking gun thing. It's like, it's even more than a smoking gun. It's a silhouette smoking gun, and it's kind of like, <laughs> you can't see the gun, but it's so obvious. Uh, so I, I gave her five stars in the end because that, that, that's how I rationalize it. Anyway, I fully digress for like five minutes of this video. I know some of you are interested in the Uber thing, so that's why I keep you up to date with the juicy stories. So today we're here to talk about the pre-Christmas event. It is obviously to do with Monopoly. 
Um, let's talk about the, the packages straight away. Winter supplies. They're both must-buys. Well, not, not must-buys, but the first one definitely is a must-buy. Uh, actually, no, is it a must-buy? It really depends on what kind of player you are, right? So if you're free to play, these things aren't necessarily worth it for you because really the thing with Monopoly is you actually need a bunch of dice in order for this to start cranking up value. So when I mean a bunch of dice, I mean it means like if you don't complete shelter mission, it's hard to say whether or not it's worth it buying any of these things, right? Because the nice thing that DH did this week, if you haven't noticed, is they ran Monte Carlo simulations to tell you, all right, this is the number of dice, and here are the odds of getting these things, right? It doesn't show you if you have less dice than this, which some of you do because some of you are free-to-play players, right? You'd be like, well, I don't really want to buy 4,500 gems um, from the, the board here, uh, and I don't really want to do shelter mission, right? So if that's the case, if you're not doing that, I don't know how many dice you're going to end up with, but you're gonna, <laughs> you're not gonna, these, these, these numbers are no longer gonna be relevant for you, right? So people that actually do buy the four and a half thousand gems and the shelter, statistically speaking, it's basically saying 50% of you should end up somewhere between 200 and 229 stars, right? And then obviously you get more stars, the value of, well, just the possibility of you getting more stars just goes higher and higher. So it's saying if you buy everything this week, right? Literally everything, the 85, well, the $2,000, not the $2,000, the 2000 gem pack as well as the $20 pack, then you have a 50% chance of someone getting somewhere between 260 and 299 stars, and you have one third of a chance of getting more than 300 stars. So basically everything on the board. And so that should guide whether or not, you know, you should buy certain things. Uh, and I said, look, this is super helpful because this clarifies above and beyond what the odds of getting, uh, falling on these <laughs> number of stars are based on 78 dice, because a lot of you obviously do that. Anyway, let's talk about the winter supplies. So, winter supplies, the warming supplies have done the analytical thingy <laughs> that you come to my channel for. So, it's the thing that threw me was when I did a quick math, I didn't realize this was for seven days. So, when you buy this, it's seven days times whatever you see here. Not like, oh my god, I spent 2,000 gems and I'm only getting, you know, <laughs> what, 375, wait, uh, 100, 250, yeah, 375 scrolls plus uh, 150 there, like, 525 gems back, that's kind of silly. No, you get seven times this, and this is insane value. You get seven times that. So the warming package, you, you spend 2,000 gems, you're going to get about 3,675 gems back. So a one point, 184% return, which in the stock market or anywhere in life is just truly phenomenal because it's beyond <laughs> pay, just break even. Then in terms of the passionate package, so if we look at that, 20 bucks, uh, you get 7,000 gems over seven days. More importantly, you get 70 feathers uh, and the 14 dice is obviously nice as well, but it's more so the feathers that you're getting. And so the return is about 630, well, yeah, 630 gems per dollar spent, which is way above the threshold of 400 gems per dollar spent that we typically benchmark ourselves to. So it's about a 50%, I guess, better than average is, is what we're getting at in terms of return there. So spreadsheet in the link below, uh, and that's the winter supplies. And I think it's, it's just, again, they've looked... They've realized that certain things are just terrible value. Like, for example, all these packages are just shite value. <laughs> so no one's buying them. Um, and these ones, I don't know why they just do these and just leave these little fuckers out because I don't know who bought. Unless you're a super whale, there's just no compelling reason to buy these in a week where they don't give you any other stuff, right? The event last week finished, Isla Sweet House. This torch is only good on uh, Garuda right now. So I, I don't know. And you need the upgraded version. So I don't know anyone that needs this. This is probably a skip for like 99% of you. It's probably really for a whale that just wants all the artifacts to be a splendid version. Flora is useless. She's probably going to be useless soon. Sia is potentially useful if you're building your first transcendent hero. A lot of people I've now have one transcendent hero, either Bloodblade or Sia. And Sia, based on what I've seen, seems to be the better one, right? Um, but that could, could be because how people have set her up. The interesting thing to note is if you also have these cornucopolis left from last time, whenever that event came around, you can now swap them out for feathers like you could last time. So very important thing to note, if you have them left over, just swap them out. So this week I'm kind of conflicted between Sia if I want to build my first transcendent hero and that's Sia and I need to get four more copies of her, which is an issue. Or do I just want to go for scrolls? Um, oh, <laughs> let me get the wrong thing. 2,427 cakes I've ended on. So I think I might as well just get the scrolls because... Sia is not going to change my world. I mean, she is, but like, if I win Trial of the Champions, uh, if I win Crystal Crown Arena, you know, what are those extra 
glory coins going to get me besides profit orbs? Like, what the hell am I going to do more profit orbs right now? Because there's nothing on the horizon that's worth building. Building uh, for, based on the last few heroes released, will it be that you know, Suke, the Samurai, or Morax? I have like a fuck ton copies of Morax, and like he's um, no one's shown me how good he like how where he can be useful. So. I've always used these heroes. I know I seem to summon for like the shite heroes. Like I've got Morax. Um, I have got Flora. You can, if I <laughs> use my crystals to build a Christmas hero, you can bet almost certainly that it'll be a crap hero. Uh, because I just have a knack for picking crap heroes. Be it Tara, uh, be it Morax, be it Flora. I just seem to summon all the shite in the world. So maybe just wait before you use your 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 scrolls for Christmas. Just let me do my video next week. We'll replace her it straight away, and I'll show you how good or shite that hero is. It's probably going to be complete shite. From if I just had to guess, did Monopoly without you all because I got bored. I think I had fifty three dice or whatever it was because I bought all the packs and I bought all of this and did shelter mission, and so I got to one thirty three, which seems kind of low. But then I'm getting three extra dice a day on top of the four, so seven a day uh, times six. You're gonna get. I'm gonna get another forty two dice. So 42 times an average of two or three points per dice, 120, 250. I'm going to end up like around here, which which is what the stats said. I mean, what did it say? 260, 290. Ooh, see, I'm on a bit on the low side, like 85. Statistically, 260 and above, 85% of you should get there. I don't think I'm going to get there. I'm going to be the, like the fucking 15% below um, because the trouble was when I did Monopoly this time around it took me forever like literally forever to get that extra dice that extra lucky dice that extra lucky dice makes so much of a difference um, in the game like literally I had like 50 whatever dice and it took me to like grow 46, 47 before I finally got it I thought I genuinely wasn't going to get a lucky dice um, that lucky dice allows you to skip all these squares that's like a lucky dice is effectively a free dice every time you go around. That's the best way to think about it because it lets you move, if, like say if you land here, 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 well, not maybe not here, but certainly from here to here, 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 and here. It lets you get, skip all the squares and get you another lucky dice, which is basically a free dice, right? That's the best way to think about it. A free dice every single time you go around, right? So that's Imp's Adventure. Nothing terribly exciting. Let's look at the prizes. I mean, the prizes, have they added any more skins? No, Russell's still the most recent one. So we're obviously hanging out for like the Drakes, the Rogans, the, the limited skins that they built for them this year. They're obviously taking a sweet ass time to release it, but you know, take your time. I don't really care. <laughs> Skin doesn't make that much of a difference. Then if we look at this hero selection chest, oh, and he goes up to Flora, which is okay because... Um, there's good heroes here that if you don't have a second copy of, like, for example, Sherlock. Double Sherlock's are just killing it right now. Like, I built my second Rogan only for that second Rogan meta just to drop off. Only very few people are rocking second Rogan now on my server. It's more about double Sherlock. If you also saw my last video, there was one guy with double Sherlock. I just can't kill him. I don't know how he's set it up. Yeah. Uh, and certainly, my focus is getting my second ticks up because I care about Void Vortex. Um, I need a second ticks to just get much higher level on Void Vortex. And so where am I at with my one, two, three, four, five, six, three more copies. So I should be able to get one more here, seven, hopefully two more Chris, uh, two more copies over Christmas or something. And then we'll get on nine, nine, nine copies needed to uh, E5 my tick straight away. And that's really the event for this week. Um, it's Imps Monopoly. There's nothing special about it. What else can I tell you? I mean, Christmas is obviously coming up. Uh, it's a new, probably a dark hero if we go in sequential order. Uh, value pack. Yeah, there's stuff to buy. Obviously, there'll be a bunch of Christmas stuff, and I'll do the video next week on value. Heroic exchange is interesting, right? Because it's got all the beautiful, like, strong, relevant dark heroes, be it Drake, Carey, Amun-Ra. I mean, Amun-Ra, she's, she's come back into the meta, so if you've got rid of her and you're trying to build her back up, this is a way to get another copy. Mim, it's like... Only used for the Mimchi's teams, and then Carrie is obviously Carrie. She's still useful around. And took me, it's taken me forever to build the third copy of Carrie just for Trial of the Champions. And then Drake, I'm not necessarily convinced about building a second copy of Drake. Not that I should, because I don't have any other copies. Like I can't, 
let me look. Uh, don't have any Drake spare, so I wouldn't be building my second Drake. Not now. Not not with the new Dark here on the horizon. Like I said with Kerry, I have my... Where is she? Where are you, Kerry? I have six copies, so I'm three short of another one. Slowly build over time. I've got a lot of Mims, but Mim cheese is not a priority right now. So, I mean, that's that's the Christmas event. Obviously, the new other big news is if you look at the previews, um, where is it? Obviously, this everyone's trying to hang out. What you know? How good is this artifact? Especially the Splinter version. I suspect the the normal version, just six star. It's gonna be okay. Uh, it's probably people are gonna buy it. It's more what's the Splendid version gonna look like? What's gonna fucking do? Because that'll determine whether or not I buy one of these during uh, the event next week. And that's pretty much it. Jimmy's done a video on Christmas, which is good. I will watch it. <laughs> if I care about it. You're getting gift boxes. Yeah, Christmas is gonna be good. I mean, we can, let's let, maybe let's just have a look at what Christmas is doing, what's coming, because they sent some spoilers out. Uh, save your five-star talent quest, save your five-star hero shards, keywords cold warm, lukewarm, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's the video for this week. Uh, I might do another Void Vortex run at some point in time because obviously the Void's open to... No, it's not opening. It's going to open tomorrow. Uh, and then from there, yeah, we'll just see what happens. 307. We're good. Christmas is only one week, so you don't need to save your scrolls um, for the Christmas event because it's only one week. They might make a two-week event out of Chinese New Year, but... You know, if you've got a fuck ton of these saved up, you might as well just use them for something. Depends, you know, there's no point, there's no harm in using it and there's probably no harm in storing it either. So, yeah. Anyway, that's the video. Have a great week ahead and uh, stay safe and I will see you for the Christmas download. Thanks, guys.